How's it going, Stuart? Very well, sir. Thank you. Hi, me. How's it going, Mary Kay? Dan? Uh, it's, yeah, hi. Hi, Mary Kay Stewart. Hello. Hey, Joyce. Hello. Hi. Joyce, hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, Joyce. Hi. Joyce, are you uh, running the meeting tonight? Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> I think Adam's here too. He wasn't here last month, I mean. He didn't say. Okay. All right. I'm going to bring in um, our intern. We have a new intern today. Oh. She, she just Great. graduated uh, from University of Buffalo with undergraduate degree in architecture. Nice. So she's here to learn uh, about our process. Her name is Lauren Herran, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Herran. Um, I grew up here in Austin, and I just graduated from the University of Buffalo with my bachelor's in architecture. And I was recommended to join this meeting, so it's nice to meet you all. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Thank Can you. Can you vote if we don't have a quorum? <laughs> I think we do have a quorum, so that's great. Hi, Adam. Hello, Adam. Good evening. Adam. Good evening. Joyce is here. Hi, Joyce. Dan, hello. Mary Kay, hello. Uh, well, we have a quorum with just the four of us. Um, why don't we give it one more minute and we'll get going. Um, good evening, hi, May. Good evening, Stuart. Hello. Hi, Stuart. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm just curious, is this the same web link, Zoom link that the attendees would have, or is that a different one? I believe they have a different one, and then oh, okay. they have to be brought over. Oh, uh, right. No, it's the same link. Oh, yeah. same one. Oh, it is. Okay. 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 The only difference is the login. So you're you're registered as a as a panelist. So you log in as a panelist, um, but you have to be logging in under the name that we emailed it out to. So whatever the email registration is, that's to connect to the login, and then when you you know you hit on the link, you'll come right in. So you don't actually need a special link. You can always go to the agenda. And it'll bring you right into the meeting as a panelist. Um, and if, if it doesn't, for whatever reason, I can always just move you over. So. Well, thanks. Um, I don't know if anybody else had this issue. I tried to get in via the Austin email, and they said my password had to change. And I kept trying to change it, and I couldn't get in 
to my Yasening email. I just did it about 20 minutes ago. So I'm glad. I really appreciate you sent it to my other email, Jaime. Yeah, it's, it's, it's already connected into the email. Uh, goes to your email so. Did anyone else get the uh, change your email prompt, your password prompt? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. I guess I'll call somebody tomorrow. All right, it's 7.02, why don't we get started? Uh, good evening, everybody. This is the July 2022 meeting of the Village of Ossining's Historic Preservation Commission. It's July 11th, 2022 at 7.02 uh, p.m. This is Adam Markovics, chair of the Village's HPC. Would the others in attendance please state your names? Joyce Cole. Dan Garpowit. Mary Kay Greiner. And Corporation Council Stuart Kahan. Okay, I believe we have two applications on uh, for our consideration this evening. Is there a representative from either of the uh, applicants here with us? Uh, yeah, there's a representative from, uh, well, I have two representatives named Mary Ellen here, and one is one Rockledge. Um, I know is Mary Ellen DeVivo. I'm not sure what the other Mary Ellen is, if it's not the same Mary Ellen. Um, I don't think that the representatives from 30 State Street are here. Really? Wow. Huh. So let's deal with the one where you have someone here. Do we have to second that or? Um, nope. It, it, okay. We can do the agenda any way we wish. <laughs> Great. Oh, Ms. that's wrong. DeVivo, yeah. Ms. DeVivo is uh, in. Hi, I'm showing up into my wife's account, but I'm Robert DeVivo. You can call me Bob. Good evening, Bob. Good evening. Boy, my face looks strange there. <laughs> yeah, Mary Ellen as well. Okay. Ms. Yes, and I'm Mary Ellen. <laughs> Okay, so we have Mary Ellen and Bob DeVivo, uh, representatives for the property at uh, 30, uh, excuse me, it's one rock ledge, isn't it? That's right. Okay, uh, well, go ahead, please, please tell us um, about the uh, nature of the application. Sure, um, I'll go ahead. Uh, so basically, uh, it's for two renovations. One is for replacing the concrete driveway um, with paving stones, uh, cobblestones. Uh, and the other is replacing the roof. It's a cedar shake roof now. Uh, we looked into different options uh, for what might be period appropriate and also, you know, last the longest. Um, and we had three options. One was to replace it with, uh, with uh, cedar shakes, the same that we have now. One would be um, uh, genuine slate and the other would be synthetic slate. Uh, we were advised by the contractor to go with the synthetic slate, not for price reasons. They all work out about the same price wise, but just because um, it apparently looks the same as real slate, it's a lot uh, lighter. Um, so it, uh, it's better for the house because you, know, you don't need the structural support that uh, real slate would need. And it lasts about the same amount of time as real slate, which is 80 to 100 years, they say. So uh, that did include some samples and pictures in the application. We actually have a physical sample too that they provided for us, but uh, obviously that's not part of the application, but you know, they gave us a, a slab of the, the slate. That's a picture of it, yeah. Okay, Mr. DeVivo, with regard to, uh, why, why don't we start with the roof? Mm -hmm. um, so could you say something more about uh, the choice uh, uh, between the slate or slate lookalike, and, and you've opted for the slate lookalike uh, mm -hmm. versus the replacing in kind what's there. Right. Well, the contractors advised us against uh, cedar shakes just because they um, they only last about 20 years. Um, you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see in the pictures of the house that we provided, but they're in pretty bad shape. Um, they tend to, particularly on the, sun, the sunny side of the house, which is the southern exposure, they tend to curl and peel very quickly. So you have to replace them every 15 to 20 years. Uh, whereas the 
either slate, the synthetic or the real, uh, would last, as I said, that much, much longer. Uh, they would outlive yeah, essentially, essentially so they last, last 80 to 100 years, you know, with minor repairs if in case one gets cracked or something like that. Um, so that's, we were just going with the contractor's recommendation. And also, of course, what, what might be period, period for the house, the center part of the house, uh, you may know, was, was built in 1784. Uh, the additions were built in the 1920s on either side there in the left and the right, which are the, the smaller parts. Um, I, I, um, I think with regard to the 20th century additions, um, I know for sure slate was used on, on roofs um, in, in, the, in the early part of the 20th century. Not so sure about um, the, the 18th, late 18th century. Um, do you have any further, uh, information with, re with regard to, uh, with regard to the period appropriateness, um, of a slate or slate lookalike, uh, on that middle portion? It, the house is a funky house in, in that sense, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's historic from, from two completely different time periods. Right. Uh, well, and, and, yeah. Well, slate has been used, and in this country, uh, it did start popping up in the 1600s. But it was in the late 1700s that it was we finally got, you know, more um, like an actual slate mill or or whatever you call quarry, um, and then it it started being used more often. Um, I think most of it came from Pennsylvania or Maine, as I remember once reading. Yeah. Um. Well, were you going to say something else, Adam? No, the, I, I think um, uh, that exhausts my, my questions. I just had some curiosity. Uh, this is an unusual house uh, be, because of the, the mix of time periods. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, I had just some curiosity about the, the decision to, uh, to, to essentially change the material of, of the roofing. Um, but I, I, I'm satisfied with the answer the DeVivos have um, given us. Uh, and I should state overall, I'm, I'm uh, satisfied with the completeness of uh, the application. Uh, that's all I have to offer in the way of questions or concerns about the roofing part of this application. Does anyone have anything they, they wish to ask about or um, state for the record with regard to the roofing? Uh, I'd like to offer a couple observations. Uh, full disclosure, I spoke a little bit with Mary Ellen to get more of the background on this decision. We know Bob and Mary Ellen, they're our neighbors, frankly, across from the parking lot and been over for dinner. Um, and um, I, um, I can understand why they, they would be attracted to this. Um, a couple of things that came to my attention. Um, number yeah, one, before you go on, I just want to. Uh, this may be obvious, but notwithstanding the personal, uh, you know, connection you have with the DeVivos, uh, do you feel you can be fair and impartial in rendering a decision on this application? Well, that's why I'm, I'm bringing it up. I guess you're right. That's a good point. Um, I, I can abstain from voting. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm being impartial. I'm not suggesting you do... abstain from discussing and voting. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you abstain yeah. from 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 uh, you know participating. I'm just asking if if you see uh, your relationship with the Devivos as in any way uh, impairing your ability to to judge the application fairly and yeah. impartially. The only thing I would sort of point out is that if you if you're going to abstain. You, you have to abstain from both the vote and the discussion. Oh, all right. Well, then I think I can do be impartial. I hope Bob, Rob, Bob and Marianne can um, uh, agree or understand what I'm about to say. I, um, I Dan, found out. That... Dan, may I just interrupt? This is sort of a general comment. When an issue like this comes up, it really should be vetted before the meeting. Because when you get into a situation like this, if you know who the applicant is and you live near the applicant and you have dined with the applicant in a social circumstance, 
it's uh, I have my own view as to whether or not it's appropriate, but let me just say this. These are the kind of things that should come up before a meeting so that we don't have to have the, a public discussion on it. But if you believe you can be uh, impartial, uh, that's okay. I just you know, want to make it clear that living next door or living across the street is not necessarily a disqualifying factor but being knowledgeable of the people and having, to be honest, an ex parte conversation with them about it, gotta be very careful. I'm just sort of laying that out for the entire commission, not just one commissioner. Well, listen, um, the good advice, and I certainly don't wanna um, overly complicate anything or misrepresent, I'm just trying at full disclosure. I, I, I'd like to, I, I'm not sure whether we should go offline and I could tell you my thoughts in private and then we can go back online. Um, happy to do that or I'll just continue with what I was gonna say in the public forum. I have not the, discussed the, my, the, the, I have not discussed my decision with anyone. No, so. I, I, and I have not said that you have. I'm merely okay. saying a decision to recuse. It would, not it would not be an abstention. It would be recusing yourself uh, a decision to recuse is personal to the member unless there is a specific violation of, uh, uh, of, of the general municipal law dealing with the ethics law, which there is not here. So if you believe that you can be fair and impartial, that's fine. What Jaime was pointing out is that if you recuse, you, can't, you, you literally must essentially turn your camera and your audio off until the discussion is over and cannot participate. But if you believe that you can be fair and impartial, you can proceed. All right, well, I think I can and I will proceed then. Um, essentially, a couple of things have come to my attention. One, um, I'm told that we have a precedent in Sparta for using this material, this synthetic slate. Unfortunately, you know, we don't have an in-person meeting, so, Contrary to other sessions, not when I was a member, but I've attended other historic preservation sessions, we've actually had the opportunity to actually hold the material in our hands and see what it's like and, and understand how close it may or may not come to slate. Um, I can appreciate a contractor's recommendation. Of course, our purview is a little different from a contractor's. Um, I noticed that there are a few different types of though this material. I went on the Da Vinci website. I just found this application maybe 20 minutes ago, half an hour ago. So I, I didn't think to look at it days or look for it days ago. Um, I couldn't find anything about what it's made out of, but I did find that as the uh, Davivios know, there's a variety of color, but more importantly, a variety of shape. You can get a random pattern, you can get what I think now is just going to be this pattern, a repetitive pattern of the same dimension. So they have a lot of options. And of course, there's also the, the option to have synthetic shake material or wood shingle material that would, at least my quick observation, would be about the same color as the wood shingles we have now on the home. Um, it is a very um, prominent uh, house in the district. I mean, you look at our website for Sparta and I think this house comes up on the home page for it. Um, so any change to it, I think everyone would agree should be well considered. I've also, however, in, and as I mentioned, um, I think I was told that the Fairview place, the chapel had, has this material in it. Although when I looked at that chapel um, on Fairview, it has a slightly different pattern. It's got a couple of different variations in color. And I'm not sure, it seems to be a different proportion, although I don't know for sure. I took a picture of it and it's hard to tell just from this one sample what I'm comparing. Long story short, in light of precedents I've seen for other applications, at least that were done in person and material submitted, um, I think I would really encourage uh, committee to consider an option, which I think is very easy for the applicant to, to avail themselves of, which is you upload a picture of the home into the website for Da Vinci, and you actually get, I, I think, a pretty good approximation of what every pattern option 
that might be considered, they might consider would look like. I know I did that myself for my shingle roof that I replaced a few years ago. So um, it is a big decision. And contrary to the home on Fairview, this is a home that's really seen every time anybody comes around Sparta. And I appreciate the fact that, you know, you want to um, certainly fix something that needs to be fixed and do it in a sensitive way. I just think that, you know, some more um, thought could be put into it, at least to know for the committee to know, because we've done this by precedent before in other applications to really have a better visualization of what uh, the consequence might be. If I might add a little bit of context, I did a lot of research after this application came in on the, the sort of the Da Vinci slate roof and these uh, other kinds of roofs versus slate. And so the, the interesting thing is that it, there does seem to be some sort of like comments from contractors online uh, that talk a lot about how the comparable lifespan of the two products. I think the Da Vinci actually has about a 50 year lifespan. Um, slate roofs obviously can last hundreds of years. Um, and they do in some instances, uh, but the, the amount of weight that, that they carry, real slate roofs, require uh, a lot of times some roofs to have total uh, reconstruction and reinforcement just to, to hold it. So there's you know, a significant difference in that type of cost. Um, Dan is correct. They do offer another sort of cedar shake look like um, product, um, but it did seem, you know, through my research that the, the sort of the Da Vinci tiles look kind of indistinguishable from the street level from regular slate tile. Um, I don't, you know, there's a lot of comments about how they last 50 years. I, I don't know that this product has been around 50 years, so I'm not really sure how to, you know, how to measure that comment, but that's, you know, the statement is they last 50 years, that it'll, it'll hold up over time and, and look that way. Um, Obviously, it's different from a slate roof, but this roof also doesn't have a history of a slate roof, I'm, I'm assuming, Mr. DeVivo? That's right. As far as I know, uh, the original roof was the cedar shakes. Yeah, I, I think that's correct. And it, you certainly you can't expect a real slate roof to be put on that home. It's a very difficult thing to do, very mm -hmm. expensive. And... Um, you know, I think to the casual, I can understand why some people think there's no difference. I mean, to the casual observer, you know, the slate can can look convincing. I've never spent any time at the only building that's a precedent. I think we also have to consider the precedent, which is um, anyone who might object to the idea of synthetic material on such a historic home. I guess we have a precedent that it was approved some number of years ago, apparently on Fairview Place to a home that's equally as important to the Sparta district as this one. Um, I, as I said, though, it's not just a uniform gray color. It has two different colors. It's a maybe a, might be a slightly different proportional scheme than what I think uh, the Vivios are, are showing with that sample. Um, remember, you can get a sand standard, one repetitive size um, shingle, or you can get um, some that are varied which maybe would add more texture and, and um, authenticity possibly. I'm, I'm not saying I know that, I'm just saying it's an option. And as I said, from precedent, at least when I've seen in other ap uh, applications in the past, including my own actually that I had to do years ago, um, you know, there's something more than just one isolated sample, particularly when the company avails you of the opportunity to merge it and see how it actually will look in your home, on your house. As I said, I've done it myself with my shingle home uh, roof. So it's, it's not to reject this or, or say it's wrong out of hand. Of course not. There's precedent for it and I can see why people are attracted to the idea. I just know that the catalog offers a lot of options and I'm wondering whether this is really possibly the best one. Um, and if it's our role to, you know, um, encourage that, uh, that exploration. Your role is not to determine the best option. No, I didn't not, think it was. I know no. it's not, nor the most expensive option. No, it's, I it's know to, that. <laughs> it's to determine the option, which is fair under the circumstances, 
with regard to the applicants. So I just I just wanted to be clear. I don't want it to think that, you know, you got to go for the gold standard because as as you have correctly said, roofs have been changed in the historic Sparta district before and uh, and approved by the HPC. So this would not be this would not be the first time, but it's a board, it's a commission decision as, as to what is needed. But I think it might also be important to hear from the applicant because some of the things that perhaps are being suggested may well have already been looked into. Fair enough. So we, <clears throat> we had gravitated toward a particular uh, type of tile. Um, I think that may be in the application. It's called the European single width tile, um, but we're flexible you know, if, uh, if, there's, uh, if there are any suggestions as to what might be more appropriate. Uh, I didn't realize that there was an option to um, upload a picture of your house to see what it would look like. Yeah. Uh, certainly they, avail ourselves of that. The contractor did say that the more the single size is more of a traditional, like that's what you would find in the the right. town, you know, the all different sizes, all different colors. That's a little more modern or like European, you know. Um, so that's why we went with the. It's, it, the slight variation in color, um, you can barely notice it. Instead of the all gray, we thought looked a little more synthetic, I guess, where you have to have slight, slight variation, it looks a little more real. Yeah. And the color is is more of a brown. That's that's correct. Oh. Right? I'm not good with color. But no, it, no, it's gray. He's colorblind. It's gray. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. But it's a darker gray. It doesn't look like the, the sample on that picture that we should. That we just looked at. Well, I think if you were just yeah, able to upload that um, your house into the whatever program they're using it would be so much easier for us to get a visual um, to make a determination. Mm -hmm. Question for the DeVivos. Um, uh, Dan Garbowit suggested that there is a synthetic cedar shake available on the market. Have you looked into that? Um, we were advised against that, but I didn't really look into it any further. I didn't think that it looked, you know, like slate doesn't age like cedar. You know, I mean, cedar, it would look the same all the time. So I don't think the, we kind of didn't want the synthetic cedar because it wouldn't look as real. Um, whereas the slate doesn't, you know, over years, slate kind of, you know what I mean? The variation over the years, it doesn't like patina or yeah, so we, we did look into it, but I, if like I could it. say, I think the question at hand really, I mean, certainly we can't opine on the cost or, you know, certainly we're not asking you to take a more expensive option um, or telling you what option you have to take, I guess. But it, we, I, my initial reaction, and that's of course why we're on the board and having these discussions is that it is a prominent home and what's very prominent is the color of the roof is tends to, you know, is a certain color and in many ways doesn't contrast as much with the brick in my view as it would with a darker gray, a uniform gray roof. That's my reaction. Um, I'm allowed to have a reaction and an opinion, um, but I'm not saying that, you know, that's wrong if you do it. I, I think that as Joyce was saying, we would all just have a better understanding of what we're approving if it were easy to facilitate a view of it. And if, it, if that kind of a service or software weren't available, I suppose we'd have, you know, not many options in, in terms of, you know, asking you to do this thing, but it seems like it's fairly easy to do. August meeting. And there is, and I do not think that we should let the applicant wait till September. Yeah, I, so I, I, I would, I, Jaime, let me just finish. Sorry. I think that perhaps if the DeVivos are, are amenable, they could upload this and perhaps one or two of you could look at it. And if you are okay, then you could sort of conditionally get this granted because otherwise we're not doing this till after Labor Day, which seems to be unfair. And when I say unfair, I mean, because there's simply no August meeting. Uh, and at the same time, you could tonight also consider their driveway application so that at least they can get themselves started. So that if they're, if the DeVivos are able to do the uploading and provide that to one or two folks, if you want it to be Joyce, Dan, whoever, Adam, you think is appropriate, 
can look at it. We've done this in the past with other applications where people have, you know, we've it's sort of designated a subcommittee of the committee to look at it. And you folks report back if you're okay, then uh, the application, then the COA on that can be granted. But at least this way, uh, we're not holding it for eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good to me. So this is single width slate. So this is a way of sort of getting a gallery of how this exact look looks in this exact color style. So you can go through and pull it up single width slate European. So these are uh, most likely what you're going to get. I'm not sure about what you're talking about, Dan. I didn't find that on the website when I looked for it. Um, what the, what I no. it before, but this this is the way that you can sort of look specifically at that style of, of roof tile in that color scheme. And I think you know this does kind of go a long way to show you how there's sort of some slight color variations. And this is the single width, so it's kind of thick. 12 feet European color. This is specifically what they designated on their application for the roof tiles. Um, and, and just as, a, as an aside, as, as someone who does renderings, I'm not sure that a rendering is gonna show the color better than actual examples of the color that you're gonna see here on the website. Well, I think that that certainly could be true. They're not you know, very expensive uh, software. And I think maybe this is, something addressed to the applicant. It's a more of an approximation, but it certainly will give you some idea of when you have a gray roof of some kind, how it's gonna change possibly your impression of the home from what it is now, where it's a, you know, a cedar color roof, that's all. And um, you know, certainly as Jaime said, there are close up pictures of the images of the shingles. Yes, of course. Um, but you know, to see it on your home, if it's something that can be facilitated easily, I don't see how that, you know, wouldn't be anything but possibly a helpful tool. And um, but in in general, I don't, I can't say I have a, a problem with the idea of using sl this artificial slate. There's a precedent for it, and you know, as I said, to a casual observer, it, you know, tends to look like the the real stuff, and you you can't be held to put in real see real shingles. Um, sorry, slate. That's for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone on the commission has a problem with synthetic slate versus real slate. But uh, Dan, uh, you know, you raised an issue. This, this has not been a slate roof before. And uh, just to articulate a general principle of preservation for the DeVivo's benefit, you know, while, while period appropriateness is, is something that preservationists look to when there's no information, we do have information here. We know that this specific house hasn't had a slate roof. And, and all things being equal, an in-kind uh, replacement is, is preferred. That's national interior standards of, of uh, rehabilitation kind of uh, standard. Uh, so uh, as far as further guidance to the DeVivos and what maybe one or two of us would like to look at in the next few weeks is, uh, I think, um, uh, uh, renderings or samples uh, showing the, the, the synthetic slate. And if there is available some synthetic uh, cedar shake, uh, I think that's what would be most useful uh, for the DeVivos to prepare for one or two of us to review in a few weeks' time. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds perfectly appropriate. Yeah, I think it would be helpful for, for everybody, including the client. And if there's an issue doing it, I mean, I saw, I think it was $35. I think they made a charge of $35, but mm -hmm. if there's some technical issue or, you know, it, it doesn't look, you know, in any way helpful, well, then I guess, you know, I'll leave it up to whoever's going to be looking at it with you to, you know, give you some uh, final assessment. We'll figure something out to do a proper simulation. So who's it going to be? Dan, would you like to be part of the uh, subcommittee, as it were, that's going to review the additional submissions from the DeVivos? 
Um, I, I think I could be impartial. Okay. And I... So how about the two of us tag team it? Okay. If, if, if that's okay with the, uh, I mean, do we ask the applicants if they concur? Is that part of the process? I think the important thing is to ask the applicant specifically or tell the applicant specifically what you're asking of them. And if the two of you will, are able to look at it and you think it's okay, and it's really if your board members think that's an agreement to basically leave it in your competent hands yeah. and you guys can proceed and, and do that and then let us know and that certificate of appropriateness can then get issued. Fair enough. All right, let's put this on hold for a moment and we can rearticulate it in a minute. Uh, I think this was the hard part of the application, uh, which yes. is why I started with it. Uh, I don't have any objection to uh, the, the cobblestones um, being placed in uh, the, the uh, cement driveway um, or replacing the cement driveway. Yeah, I think it's very appropriate. I think it's terrific you want to do that. I think it will add a character to the to the house. Any other thoughts about uh, the driveway portion of the application? No, it looks good. Okay. So I think we've, we've made it through both components of the application. With respect to the driveway, um, I think there's consensus that the application can be approved um, without any changes. With respect to the roof, I think there's also consensus. Uh, uh, however, um, uh, I think we're asking the DeVivos to provide two of us, namely me and Dan, uh, in the coming weeks, um, either samples or renderings of the different materials that may be available uh, for this project, uh, uh, synthetic cedar shake and synthetic uh, slate. And uh, upon our review of the materials provided, uh, there's consensus that if, if Dan and I approve, uh, then, the, then the certificate of appropriateness can be issued. Uh, so Stuart, sh shall we vote on that this evening? Adam, Adam, let me just ask one question. I, I, I heard what you said. Uh, there is obviously a cost component potentially here. In other words, one could turn out to be far more expensive and that could be the one that you and Dan favor, but that's obviously not how the board is supposed to render its decision as well. So I do think that that has to be some consideration and just let the DeVivos know that, I mean, you'll look at it, but cost shouldn't be the fact. Cost, if, if something, if, if there are two different things and one turns out to be far more expensive, it's also not fair to put that burden on the applicant to basically say, you know, we want you to spend X more than to, to do this. So that's just a consideration. But I think in terms of a vote, uh, uh, it seems that the board can certainly vote on the certificate of appropriateness as relates to the driveway. If the uh, uh, members are in agreement, they can vote to refer this matter to the subcommittee to look at the, uh, uh, the, the renderings uh, as requested by, uh, by the board. And uh, if those are acceptable, then uh, you just have to let us know and the COA can be granted for that as well. So I think that I think that's fine. You can all uh, you can make a motion to, to go in that direction. And uh, uh, hopefully the DeVivos can get this stuff to you folks pretty quickly so it can be turned around and if possible, even put into one certificate of appropriateness rather than two separate documents, making it that much easier for for them and for all concerned. OK. I think I've I've stated the uh, uh, the potential um, motion we're voting on, and Stuart has restated it. I don't know if I need to state it a third time. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, th that's the motion with respect to uh, the driveway and the roofing. The driveway approved as is. The roofing subject to review by the subcommittee of Dan and myself of 
uh, either uh, materials or uh, sufficiently uh, detailed um, renderings. Um, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Good, thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeVivo. Thank you. Mr. DeVivo, what I, what, what, I, what I would ask you to do is this work through uh, the planning director, Mr. Martinez, to get those uh, you know, renderings or whatever together, and he will then get them to uh, Chair Markovics and to member Garbic, Garbovitz so that they can review it and do what's necessary. Rather than you communicating directly, okay. go right through the planning okay. director. Will do. Thanks. Uh, should we sign off now? So you, you can. You can. Thank you for your time, uh, Devos. I appreciate your thoughtful application and you. uh, your patience with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. I may have 30 State Street folks here. Nope. Well, geez. Here last month, they had like an emergency last minute. Um, I thought they'd be here this time. So Yeah, because there was a there was an extensive discussion last time with regard to uh, things that were uh, requested. But if they're not here, well, that'll be Did on. Did they the respond to, to, I think, whatever you may have sent them after they missed the meeting? I'm just curious. It's hard to believe yeah, that they I, wouldn't I, even- I spoke with them. I, it was just an emergency. They just failed to notify me that they weren't gonna come last time. I'm not sure what happened this time, but, uh, you know, Look, uh, in the era of the pandemic, you know, emergencies happen all the time. So you never really know. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, Jaime, can I say something? Who is Lauren? Oh, Lauren is our is, is your clerk. I is, is, uh, is yeah, the Lauren intern. Is My apologies, Lauren. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. You just Good introduced Lauren. yourself. And that's what's what's called short-term memory when you get older. You lose, you lose, <laughs> you get everything. But uh, okay, so there's no one else here. So uh, that that application will have to get carried till September. Yep. All we can do. And that happened the last time too. Uh, well, it happened that they weren't here and uh, you folks had raised certain questions, particularly with regard to the windows and you wanted certain information, uh, which they were not here to provide. And uh, we, would, we had, would have hoped that they would have been here today. And, uh, I mean, uh, they largely answered those questions to me, but I, I think it's better than we so. Okay. All right. With, with yeah, that I mean, said, I would just uh, remind the group that it's July. Uh, that means the year is more than halfway over. And if you haven't uh, thought about taking training courses yet, you should. Uh, there are excellent trainings available uh, through the New York State Preservation League, uh, through the Historic District Council in New York City. Um, so be, be on the lookout uh, for trainings in the coming months. We need to complete four hours worth before the end of the year. Uh, I hope everyone's been having a good start to their summer, and I wish all of you a good August. And unless anyone has anything uh, further to add, I, I will see you in September. I make a motion to adjourn. I have one question. Uh, in the past, we've been getting emails about... Um, online classes to take? Is that something that will continue or should we go to these websites? Yeah, you'll, you'll keep getting those. Say, when we get those emails uh, from WUMP, we forward them on. I would encourage everybody to go join WUMP as well and you might learn about some classes there. Um, Jamie, you know, will send them out as soon as she gets them uh, to all the board members. But I, I would certainly encourage you to take the classes and then let Jamie know that you took the classes so that she can get the credit towards the training. Okay, yeah, so if you continue to forward on those links, I'd appreciate it. We will do so. Thank you. No problem. I Everyone said. have a lovely August. We will see you in September. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye. Take care.